few people in our history have been entrusted with the power to investigate a president and those around him. It has been over 20 years since President Bill Clinton faced the Whitewater investigation that eventually expanded into the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Ken Starr was, of course, the independent counsel during the investigation. Back in the late 90s, he was almost as ubiquitous in news coverage in real time as one Robert Mueller is today. Ken Starr lived to tell about it. He's here with us tonight. He's a former federal judge, former solicitor general, and independent counsel, as we said, in the Whitewater and Monica Lewinsky investigations during the Clinton administration. He also happens to be the author of a new book, Look Who's on the Cover, called Contempt, a memoir of the Clinton investigation. Uh, Counselor, thank you very much for making us part of your tour. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I'm very curious to talk about a guy you know. Robert Mueller is probably the subject of more of this broadcast for someone whose voice we never hear yes. than, than anyone else. Talk about him personally, talk about how he operates and your opinion of how he has acquitted himself thus far. Well, I think the contrast uh, of, of the Mueller investigation and the investigation I was charged with, as I describe in the book, is pretty clear. He reports to the Attorney General of the United States I and my fellow independent counsels were independent of the attorney general. What a huge difference that makes. And so the assurance that the American people have is that when he undertakes an investigation into an area, let's say Paul Manafort, he has secured the authority, the authorization of the attorney general here, the acting attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, who is a man of integrity. Now, I know Bob Mueller to be a man of integrity. I've expressed concerns about some of the people around him and some of the noise that we have seen. I think it's important for the American people, all of the American people, to have confidence in the integrity of the investigation. Those issues were raised when I was uh, on the duty station, and they're being raised now with Bob Mueller. But I know him to be a man of integrity. So it's not a witch hunt? It's definitely not a witch hunt. Uh, that is a term used by any and every politician. It was used by Bill Clinton. It was used by the entire Clinton White House when we were doing our work from really day one. There's nothing there. Well, there was a lot there. There were 14 criminal convictions, including the president's uh, business partners. Uh, and Hillary, of course, provided legal services for Madison Guarantee Savings and Loan. There was a lot there. Uh, and so the independent counsel or the special counsel has a tough job to do. And he, she needs to get the job done as quickly as possible. Did you ever think in your adult lifetime you'd have a president of the United States that when you wake up in the morning, you read, has attacked the Justice Department and the FBI? I think that's a mistake. Uh, no, did I, th did I think that? And I think the president uh, is ill-advised to follow his instincts in, the, in this uh, case. But I must say, I was the victim of an unrelenting assault from the Clinton White House. It began virtually on day one. And I found myself transmogrified, and I describe it in the book, mm -hmm. overnight from being a former judge and a former solicitor general uh, into something that I was not. Uh, and so it's easy for politicians, whether the president of the United States or a member of Congress or a city council person, to say this is all political. Let's get to the facts. Let's get to the bottom of things. Forgetting for the moment about how he talks, should the president of the United States sit down with the special counsel? There are two perspectives on that. The criminal defense lawyer says absolutely not. And that's what we heard from David Kendall, as I describe in the book. Uh, President Clinton's very able lawyer was saying, well, no, no. And eventually we issued a subpoena on yeah. behalf of the grand jury. So we will see what unfolds. You know, it's perhaps the fourth inning, maybe the fifth inning uh, of what's uh, uh, unfolding. But the other perspective is that of the president of the United States. And I think that there is an obligation on the part of the president to assist and cooperate and a duly authorized federal investigation. God forbid you're on your deathbed someday and someone <laughs> says, Judge, did this, did this go too far? Did it, did it get out of hand? What's the answer, in addition to being sad that you'll be at the end of your life, what's the answer <laughs> for the ages? The answer, the, star for, investigation? the answer for the ages is that Congress demanded that a report be given in the impeachment context in the special counsel statute in effect. That is no longer in effect. 
That statute drove the dynamic toward impeachment. Impeachment is hell. And we're seeing polls in terms of impeachment. And so I think we have reformed that under the aegis of uh, Attorney General Janet Reno when this statute under which I was appointed expired. We went to a, essentially a restoration of the tradition that began with Ulysses S. Grant and had been the tradition for a lot of those many years. We depend on the executive branch to engage in a certain amount of self-policing, including saying, let's go outside to appoint this particular investigator to investigate the president. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.